Okay, so today for the Voron guide, I guess that I'm doing is um, we're going to be looking at installing and putting together the clockwork part of the afterburner. Now, clockwork is pretty much the um, bit which you'll be using your beam G extruder parts with a pancake stepper motor and all these other parts here. So, the part that this attaches to is this part which you um will eventually put together as well. So here it is pictured with a E3D with a maxi watt hot end which you don't really need to worry about. It has a probe inside there so with all these bits put together this eventually attaches to your rail on this part here so it slides like this across and then this part actually attaches to the top of it and pushes the plastic through. That gives you an idea of where all the bits are going. And then on top of that, you have a fan that attaches to it here and it slides off. So I've got a bunch of parts here that I'll go through. Now before you get up to this part, a good thing to do is to just go through the manual or um, the guides that you can find on the web and make sure you put in all the heat inserts that you can find. So you can see this part here, this is um, the cable chain it attaches to. We have that. Another part here. Now there's a few on this one, so there's two get it on the right side because it doesn't go all the way through and then on this one as well these screws are on the back for front they actually should be going through this way but it sits easier so you've got two here one there and there's actually one here a sneaky one that I forgot about too um, are there other ones there's a few other spots on here as well too no okay that's about it so you figure out all these bits and then you get screws ready. So the long screws that go into this are M3 by 30 millimeter, and that there is one 8 mil one which um, attaches to this part, which um, we'll get to shortly. So let's start, eh? So the first thing you do once you've installed your um, heat inserts. Now um, I think I might have another video about doing heat inserts. The guide for it basically is that you get your heat insert, put it in here. I'm going to use a nut as an example because I don't have any heat inserts here at the moment. You put it in place and then you just basically let the weight of your um, your soldering iron push it down. So I'll push it in and you get it about 90% of the way in, not all the way, and then give it a quarter turn twist each way so the um, threads have a bit to bite into. And then you turn it around and you push it onto the table. So that makes sure then you've got a flat surface that's flush. And that works great for all these bits. So anyway, once we've done this, we need to do the first part here, which is attach the thread to your stepper motor. So this part is called, oh, they don't have a name for it. Now, this is a BMG extruder kit as opposed to the actual BMG extruder. There's only a few dollars difference and the trouble with this is that if you lose any of these parts you're in a lot of trouble. So I'm being very mindful of that. So this part definitely looks like the bit that I need to put in. So we'll double check anyway. Actually no it doesn't. So I've already have gone wrong. This makes sense now. So this is the um, threaded part where the um, filament gets pushed through. Oh, so the other thing you need to do too is because this part here is getting filament pushed through, make sure that when you push your filament through, does it go through? So, yes it does. So you've got to make sure your filament path is pretty fine. And if it's not, or you don't like they recommend um, putting a 2mm drill bit through there just to make sure it's very clean and there's no sort of gunky bits of your filament there. So let's put this part onto the stepper. Okay, that will sit on very loosely. Doesn't go back to front, does it? So what I'm betting is, later on, there is another part that steps on the other side of it. Well, there's a nut or something? Anyway. Oh, yes, okay. So what happens is, this bit goes on, 
and this bit goes on. Now see that there's a hole here. This is where our M three by eight screw is going to sit flush through there. I'll just confirm that. Yep. So we'll put that in place. I'm just going to finger tighten it if I can. Now it's a bit tricky to get it, so um, probably. Oh no, I can access it. Socket head screw. This is more effort that it's worth, so I'm going to grab my two and a half mil and put it in. Oh, so also, I might get this wrong because there is a certain direction that this is meant to pop out. And I think it is meant to be um, to the right. That should be an easy change though. And if it's not, I'll actually just confirm which direction that should pop out. So one moment. Okay, I'm back. So in regards to the position that the um, stepper mode should be, you can see here that it should be on the outside. Now this is um, from a pinned discussion on afterburner questions. Um, again, if, if you're trying to install this without being on the Discord, uh, you're going to be in a world of pain because there's a lot of sort of tidbits and guides for on there. And a lot of the things that you learn from this forum stuff is pretty much what not to do two or three times before you actually do the right thing. So I'm going to adjust this. So this part is matching what is in the picture. So we're all good now. I think at some point later on we actually um, have to disassemble and take off two screws from the pancake stepper itself so it is important to get this bit right now. Right, so that bit is in, just fairly loose. Okay, cool. Got that. So the next step is we have to put our heat insert into this part. I don't know the actual name for it but we'll do that. Cool, it now attaches to Oh, this is one. So I've got a printed accent for this part here. Yep. One of these ones. I think it is that. So I'll get that part out. So now, this part is going to basically attach to this, like that. I think it's going to be a latch mechanism where um, uh, some teeth are going to attach to. So we are going to oh, we we are going to grab like a tensioner. That's what this is, a tensioner dial. So look inside our kit again for the proper part. Oh, this is going to be an interesting step, isn't it? So I know I need. Oh God. Gonna be fun, isn't it? So I'm just going to install the bare minimum of what they're asking for. I don't know what some of these parts are for in this. So tensioner dial, check, and also the spring check. So I do not know where these other bits go. So I will double check just briefly in that pinned message make sure I'm doing the right thing. So, go to that. Cancel whatever that's doing. Alright, so, it says, put the teeth on, similar motor plate, doesn't really mention much. Alright, so, you can see in the picture here, they just have the tooth, the tensioner and the spring, so let's go off what they've done there. I'll see if there's any other steps later on. Okay, cool. So we are attaching this bit on like this. So grab this part, push this through and then attach this part to it. I 
it's fun. This is going to have a very satisfying feel if it will open once it's completed. Okay, so we've done that. Now we need to put together the toothed extruder. Now it looks like this part I'm putting on. I'll double check. Yeah, it does look like that part that I'm putting together. Except, which one of these am I using? Oh. Seems to not have a grub screw in it, so I'm going to guess that it's this one. Take that out. Put that on. Put this bin on. So again, these are bits you do not want to lose. Okay. So, these bits will slip into here. Okay. Gives it freewheeling movement. Now, I'm not sure if we need to use thread locker on this. I'm going to assume that we don't at the moment. So once this part's installed, then we need to put it together with the teeth section being in the wider part, so that'll clip in. Oh, that's cool. Alright, let's give this a go. Oh, how cool is that? Look at that. Wow, that's satisfying. Cool. Alright. So that's assembled. The next part is the really tricky Lockwork machine in Asians. So we have a white shim washer. Oh god, look at that, that tiny little grub screw that scares the hell out of me. Okay, so we have that. We have this stepper here, and we have the other part of the shim washer. Okay, so let's Take these parts here. So it looks like actually it's going to be these two bits. Let's double check here. So we've only got one plastic white shim, so I don't think it'll be that. It'll be these metal parts. Sure, why not? And that I don't know what the different sizes mean. That out. Alright, so we have this bit on this side to match that. Now we have another part here. Take this out. I'm betting that I will have to come back once I'm happy with this stuff and then I'll need to um, thread lock inside this bit to make sure those grub screws don't turn once I'm happy with the installation of it. So, and I can definitely make sure of that because that grub screw actually sits on this bit. So I'm going to have to loosen it already. And I don't know, does it come with the... It does come with the Allen key to do that. I bet you that's probably a 1.5mm one. Okay, so loosen this. That works great. Happy days. Loose. Tighten. Okay. Gives you resistance. Now we've got another part that sits on in here. Okay. So by the looks of it, the um, stepper motor is going to drive this gear to increase the torque, and then that pushes your filament through. Again, let's guess though. Let's find out. So that gets pushed into this bit. Does it sit through? No, I guess not. Okay. Is 
It seemed okay. Seems weird. I don't reckon it's gone in as far as it should. So what I'm gonna do is loosen that screw because the um, filament path needs to make sure it butts into this bit. So loosen the screw. That should give me a bit of flexibility to move it in any direction I want it to go. And I bet this bit will want to move down. No, it won't. Okay. It's good to know. Tighten this screw again. Grub screw. So I'm, I'm not tightening this very hard to be honest. So it does that sit in the filament path now. Very close. Not quite. So to, if, if I wanted that to sit there more, I really need to push this the other direction. As in, towards that way. But let's do that. There we go. And I'm now going to push that. And I think that will give it a bit of a wiggle room. You know what? It doesn't feel great. Let's see if we can shift this across anymore. Take this bit off. Will it let me push this up? So this plastic gear looks like it will not shift at all. Which I guess it's okay. If that bit wasn't on, oh wow, that fits in great. Okay. All right. Let's just double check. They do definitely put that plastic spacer on. No, that metal spacer on. Let's try again then and do that. <clears throat> See, what I don't get is, like, do they push that part in? Oh, they do. Wow, look at that. That is beautiful. Alright, so now that I know they push that in, this installation is a lot easier. Okay. Wow, that's really cool. So let's get this right. And then tighten the grub screw. That's that's really clever. I'm a big fan of that. So pull this out a little bit. And now I've got a Part there, so that that filament path is really well lined up. Turn it around to find the grub screw. Now I can see why they um they thread lock that grub screw there because you don't want that to shift there. Out of curiosity, I'm going to see if I can grab the filament, and does that still work? Look at that. Isn't that fascinating? Cool. Okay, so we've got this bit in. That's very clever. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Seeing that work now. Alright, so that's installed. We are going to put our latch in front of it for some reason. Oh, this way. Cool flex, okay. Mm, okay, how does it actually attach? Looks like we hold it in place. Oh, okay. Does that sit here? Wow. Okay. But then, what? How does it screw in? I need to take this part out now, finally. Okay, 
So this bit clearly looks like it will butt up. Yeah, I'm lost. <laughs> goes actually really close to it and it goes under so again I'm looking at the picture going where does it how does that fit in place so it definitely goes under this part here and then the next step they get this part to sit up here. Okay. So then this toothed idler, I'm curious about how it um, fits in place. Hmm. And where does it, where does it even, oh, it's a tensioner the right way. I think I need to um, screw this bit in really far to give it more room. So now I've given this bit, oh no, because it's a tensioner. <clears throat> Loosen this off. I'm getting this pretty loose now. <clears throat> it's the intention that the tensioner thing. Yeah, let's try this. Yes, I'm very confused. And this bit as well too, like where does it butt up into? <clears throat> Gonna have a look at the picture here. <clears throat> oh, okay. Have I put this on back to front? No. Okay. <clears throat> so the stepper motor's been installed here. And they've put the um, tooth gear in. This is upside down. I need to take this screw out. <clears throat> okay. So they have taken this bit. And then, sometimes it helps to get an idea of like how all the bits fit together. And that's why I'm doing this now. So in this picture, it faces out. This part fits in here. Okay. The stepper drives it. Cool. So far it makes sense. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wow, okay. So how does this bit make sense now then? <clears throat> okay, let's try again. Go back to the pin post. I can't see where they've um, installed that part. Click together. Yeah, so they've um, put this part on. But I haven't seen how they actually attach it. Okay. So 
So I'm going to try again. You know what would make this, oh, that seems fitting. What would make this much easier is, is if I'd done this before um, that part is attached. And I can still remove it. So I might do that now. Okay. So. Uh -uh. Okay. That bit fits in, but I don't get why, um, and that works. Yeah, okay. Oh, alright. So in terms of the filament path, there's the other side of where the filament gets jammed through. So on one side you have the teeth pushing it through. And you do on this side as well. Okay. What I don't understand is how that fits in place so precisely. Okay. So that goes in. Okay. And that sits in place. Cool. Cool, cool. This tensioner makes way more sense now. So what happens is, let's, let's install this and um, then I'll explain it. So the latch will push this away, allowing you to get access to the filament. Cool! Alright. So that's in place. Let's put this bit back on. Push you back in. Yep. Cool. That makes me wonder if this latch needs to move out again. Will it give us trouble with this bit? The answer is maybe. Because I can't actually see if that guide is lining up. Uh -uh. So the two bits that are giving me trouble with that is this bit not lining up here and then this part is butting up against the um, the um, plastic gear. So I have to move that up temporarily to that fitting. There we go. But again as soon as I do that, now I don't know if the um, teeth are actually um, Bunning up in place or not. Strange. Okay. Let's go ahead of it now. It's pushed in. Surely that's got to um, have a little hole for it to sit in. Okay. Okay, so now we'll put our latch on. So our latch attaches here. And see, now you can see the mechanism. Let's put the screw on. Did they say they put the screw? No, they don't yet. So we attach the motor side, which is here. Like this. So you can see there's the stepper motor doing its thing. Oh, this is, um, I've seen beta manuals where they refer to this as um, a 3D puzzle, which is absolutely correct. Look what just happened there. Put this back on. And click this back in place. So now with these bits there, we need to put it in place. Again, so checking this should all sit flush. So I'm saying which side I reckon it'll be that.
the two heat inserts. There we go. That sits in place now. Excellent. Ah. <laughs> Getting a bit of resistance on some of these bits and I'm sure there's a yeah. Excellent. That's cool. It's a bit fearful about using force, but um we clearly need to in this bit. Holding the latch in place. You can see these bits will click in place once we um, put a screw there. Although that's the weird, you know. So it says we need to put in some M3 screws. Now this is what's going to hold in place. Turn it around. Now we need to do a screw here. These are all M3 by 30. Now these are screwing in through there to the stepper motor. Yeah, Nema one. So again, now these aren't going into your heat inserts. See how the heat inserts are here? They're used later on, assuming to attach to other parts. So to this bit, I, I really want to see this in action, this part. Okay. I'm not over talking anything, just making sure it sits in place. Cool. And I'll do, if I can, the last bit. So down here, looks like I've got in the filament puff I might need to clean off, but the red has a bit of ooze and goo in there, so I'll clean that up. As you can see here, I must have a um, magnetic screwdriver because it's um, picking up some junk. From other bits that I've installed. So fix that. Alright. Getting through. Again, still weeded out by Bit. And in fact, looking at it, let's back it out for a sec. That should have a clear path through all the way. And if it doesn't, I should um, sort out what's wrong before I go any further. But I have mostly complete clockwork now, which is great. Looking at this here. I reckon let's, um, let's give this a try. So if I want to loosen this bit, I'll um, push up. Oh, oh wow, that's 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 cool. Then click it back in place. Oh wow, that's cool. Let's try it again. Now that's cool design. So that lets you, um, when you put your filament in, there's no tension. That lets me push my filament through. And that clicks it in place. Loosen it up. Now I can um, push it back out. Nice, I like that design. Alright, so again, looking at this bit, it looks like I'll go through here. I reckon that this thread must go through here. And I'm going to verify that by going, if I go in the other direction, does that go through? Okay. 
So that doesn't look like it does. So I'll click this open. Okay. Does it now? So my idler, I might need to double check how well that sits on that. Well, that looks like that would go through, so let's screw it through. Okay. I'm more about doubting myself, if anything, at the moment. So I'm screwing it together while this is being released. There we go. Wish me luck. That's a fairly chunky piece of plastic. That's still lined up, which is good. I'm going to hold that in place. Oop. Try to hold it in place. Going through now. See if it's um oh we've made it to the insert. Wow. Some of the Voran parts is like, you know, when you like me as a newbie there, I sort of just have to trust that the bits are going on properly. So I'm gonna screw this through here. Made it to the insert as you can see. Let's see flush. Okay. In. Look at that, isn't that nice looking? Right, so gears turn, let's click this in place. Wow, isn't that cool? And now that this bit's facing out, you can see how the tensioner works by pushing that in there and out. Very cool. So I'm going to click that out there. This pull out to get access to my um, teeth. I guess not. I don't know how that works. So I might have done that bit too tight actually, because you can see this part here is not fitting in place yet. So we'll have to investigate that. Anyway, so that's um, Clockwork Park um, kind of done. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed it in those three screws there. Now they, the next few steps they remove these two screws from here and they attach this plate to it. We might as well, well we won't do that now because we need some M320s. So what I'm saying here is that this part then gets this part attached to it. So we remove these screws and attach our own ones and then that's um, what the cable chain attaches to as well as um, some other stuff. And then this bit, once it's all completed, will sit onto your get it right. Oh that's so satisfying. Right. That would have had so much fun designing it. That will sit on top of the filament feeding tube there. Alright. Hopefully you like it. More videos to come later.